What's up? Today, we're going to be telling you everything you need to know about creatine as well as some frequently asked questions, and we're going to bust some myths wide open. So if you've been confused about creatine, whether you should take it, whether you're taking it right, this episode is for you. But before we jump into creatine, I just wanted to let you know that we do a Monday motivation newsletter. Kyle writes this every week. He'll share some of his favorite hacks some takeaways, some incredible quotes, and this will be delivered directly to your email. We never spam. It's amazing content. And if you love getting a little bit of extra motivation on your Mondays, definitely be sure to check this out. I'm going to go ahead and put the link. It is totally free for this newsletter once again at the top episode of the show notes. So make sure you subscribe there so you can get extra amazing content from us. And you can also get this is kind of like a bonus podcast companion because Kyle will share the quotes. He'll share some additional thoughts, those hacks, as I said. So if you love our podcast, you're going to love this newsletter. First link in the description. Now let's jump into everything you need to know about creatine and this episode. So what's going on, everyone? I am your coach and host, Josh, here with... His co-host and co-coach, KG, and I'm in the house. And this is my co-creatine expert, KG, as well, because we've been taking creatine for a while. We were pretty early on to this. I remember creatine when it first kind of came in the game, and what's kind of fun about it is it's... Uh, it's a relatively new supplement. Like it has been around, but it hasn't been utilized in the community as intensely as it is today. And it's amazing. The prices have shot up like crazy. This was seen as a hilariously inexpensive supplement. You could get a ridiculous amount, like months and months worth for $10. But now as TikTok has continued to grow, it is shot up. And there's a lot to get into about it because creatine should be very uh, cheap, very effective. And it is one of those natural supplements that actually has been scientifically proven proven to produce a great result. So I think there's no better place than to start with what is creatine. So this is actually a natural substance that is found in our muscles and in some foods like chicken, beef, alongside other things such as fish. We will get into that into a little bit. And it's also an incredible supplement. So when it's broken down into its form of creatine and there's different types of creatine, we will also get into that later. What dosing with creatine does is it helps your body utilize water and ATP to generate more strength and power within your muscles. So that's where oftentimes when people take creatine, they will say they are on the creatine cycle and their weight is bloated up. But all it is, is your body storing more water. Your body is very densely it's significantly made of water, 60 or 70%. So this water isn't water you would notice. You're not going to look fuller. You're not going to look like you are holding more water. People will really get worried about this and say, oh, I don't want to show that extra weight. The only time you would really get off of it is if you had to make a specific weight for a specific reason, but you would be losing this benefit. So that is the thing to consider about creatine. And in terms of how it works, so once again, our muscles need energy and creatine helps produce a molecule that I mentioned before called ATP. And this is the main energy source for high intensity activities like weightlifting and sprinting. So by increasing these levels, they help you do it at a better capacity with more intensity. Now, this isn't going to give you 50, 70, 80 percent gains. I've always liked the number of like a little 3 percent boost. Um, that is not a scientific number, but that is a number I have found and I've kind of stuck with. And even my personal experience, I think most people would agree with. But 3 percent can be very, very significant, especially as you become more elite. And once again, the amazing thing about creatine, which we'll get into, is there are essentially no drawbacks. Now, keep an asterisk on that. We will get into that in a little bit. But all in all, creatine is one of those supplements that is absolutely incredible but there are a lot of misconceptions around it and there's a lot for us to get into but before we do do that Kyle wants to give you a few of the key benefits that you could expect while you are taking creatine yeah and fun fact I've been using it I guess probably seven eight years now religiously like just every single day five grams it's been absolutely fantastic I remember the one time I went off creatine I was getting ready for a physique show and I think I was too eager to get the scale to go down and it did go down because I went off it, but it wasn't exactly, it wasn't worth it. It just made no sense for me to do this. This was many, many years ago, even traveling. I still try to make a habit as best as I can, depending on the situation and how long I'm going for and, and whatnot. But, uh, to me, it's just the one thing that has been in my routine as a supplement every single day. And like Josh said, it's because the benefits are so great. And then the drawbacks are so few. So obviously when it comes to the benefits, like when you list them at list them out to know that there's very few drawbacks. It's pretty incredible. If I were to tell you that you could have improved performance, you could have increased muscle mass, you can have in, uh, enhanced recovery, and it also supports brain health for a, 
a essentially reasonable price. Like Josh said, it is a little more expensive. I was pretty blown away the first time after all the TikTok videos came out and I went in, I was like, we we're like, what, $60 for this bottle? What? Um, but either way, so anyways, those are all incredible benefits. And I really do personally notice a difference if I were to come off of it. I can't say day to day I notice it because I'm so used to taking creatine every day and it's been the better part of, like I said, seven plus years. But even still just knowing for improved performance, like it just helps you so much in terms of high intensity to exercise, lifting heavier weights, sprinting faster, you know, even just overall gaining muscle over time, which is going to allow you to train harder and recover faster, um, which once again is an absolutely incredible benefit. Instead, you know, obviously some people would consider it like when you hear the benefits, you're like, are you talking about steroids? Which of course it absolutely isn't. And it's a funny story because even Josh and myself for years and years, like I remember when I would tell people I started taking creatine, like this was back in high school when I first started experimenting with it. And I would always get these comments about protein and creatine as essentially uh, as a steroid. I'm like, no, it's just, it's completely natural. Like it's, it's not at all. Like that's not what it is at all. Um, anyway, so the benefits are absolutely incredible, but the thing I wanted to spend time on here before we jump into how to use it dosage and then all these amazing other uh, fun facts and questions is that a lot of times people jump to this type of stuff before handling everything else. So for example, if you have the absolute worst sleep ever, your sleep routine is horrible, you never focus on it, and like that is gonna make such a big difference on your journey. And then if you start thinking, oh, if I take um, creatine, it's gonna help me with you know performance and energy and endurance, like you are gonna be highly misguided it will give you benefits, but there's so many things out there such as nutrition, sleep, stress management, all these other recovery protocols that will give you like a 50 plus percent boost. And that is also not a scientific number, but I can promise you that when you prioritize a lot of these bigger picture things combined with these little things such as creatine, other supplements that we maybe recommend, it makes such a big difference in your journey for sure. This isn't going to be a fix all cure all like Kyle said. If you're crushing it, your nutrition's on point, you're training hard, you're going to notice that 3% boost. If you're not consistent with anything, you're not in the gym, your nutrition sucks, you're wasting your time and you're wasting your money. And to the point of money, like creatine is way cheaper. I just did some quick math that appears to be about 20 cents per serving, which is phenomenal when you consider protein is now a dollar, two dollars, three dollars, depending on where you buy it. Pre-workout is a dollar, two dollars, three dollars, once again, per serving, where you buy it. So that 20%, 20 cent serving is absolutely phenomenal. And that's at the five ground mark, which takes us into dosage. So if you're looking to take creatine, first and foremost, there are a lot of different creatines. The best creatine and the simplest creatine is creatine monohydrate. There's a lot of marketing really trying to push you towards these non-bloating creatines. And in that argument, as you'll understand, your body, your body needs to utilize that water for ATP in your muscles. And bloating is a very simplified way of explaining that because that term bloating is seen as negative. So that's where people will go against that. And they'd say, I want the non-bloating one. But you're paying for all this marketing for a product that actually would be the same or inferior to a monohydrate. So when you're buying creatine, buy the cheapest one. I just Amazoned it. And there's like 80 different weird marketing of like clean, all natural, creatine, like all these weird things. And it's all the same product. You're just going to pay three to four times more for some special version or a pill version or something ridiculous like that when it is absolutely not necessary. So when you're utilizing it, get a monohydrate and take three to five grams per day. And you do not need to worry about loading. Uh, we'll get into this in a bit. But three to five grams per day is what will saturate your muscles effectively and get you where you are. Now you'll say, what does three to five grams mean? How much should I take? If you're a very, very small person, you're on the bottom of the spectrum, you're 80, 90 pounds, you could play around with three grams. If you're a really big person, such as myself, you're going to want to take that full five grams. I actually usually do about four. I feel I achieve saturation with that. I'm totally fine. Um, and once again, there's no need to think you're some special exception where you need to take 10 grams a day. Just stick to this simple. It does not need to be complicated. Now for timing, creatine can be taken at any time with any substance. So obviously pre-workout is gonna work best when you take it before your workout. It's not gonna help you when you take it before bed. Creatine is unique that you could take it at any point and you can mix it with anything you want. It's totally fine mixed with caffeine. So most often I would mix this with my pre-workout, my BCAAs. You can mix this with water, it is tasteless, but you will taste that chalky 
taste of the creatine. I personally don't enjoy it. And every time I do it, I go, why did I do this? So I find it's better to mix it into something. I know a lot of people will put in their morning coffee because it is pretty tasteless. Once again, I think it depends how big that coffee is. I don't like messing with my coffee. That's sacred. I love it. And I actually saw, it's this is a whole separate tangent, but I saw the funniest comment on YouTube. They were talking about quitting drinking. And one individual commented, with all due respect, I already cut, quit alcohol. I will quit caffeine when I die and not a moment before. So if your coffee is sacred to you too and you love it and that's how you start your day, maybe you don't want to go ahead and mix that. But I thought that was a pretty good uh, little joke there. So that is quite simply how you take creatine. No need to be crazy about it. If you take it in the mornings and you forget one day, take it at night. It's okay if you miss a day here and there, but you are risking losing saturation. And if you do that too consistently, indeed, you will miss saturation. Now, safety and side effects, do your own research. But from what I've done, and I spent some quite an amount of extensive time researching this over the years. The most common side effect you'll hear about this is hair loss. And that sounds horrible. I know you want to turn off the podcast right now, but this has only been shown in one study and has not been able to replicate. And the chance of this occurring are very, very low. Creatine is a newer supplement, meaning there aren't 50 year studies to really gauge this. So you can decide on your own level of comfort. I personally am very comfortable that I will not be losing any hair as a result of creatine. And the science backs me up on this. Once again, you're welcome to do your own research, but there's a lot of really baity things to say, don't take creatine, you'll lose your hair. So this is where I trust the science. I'm comfortable with that. That is something for you to consider. The next common issue with creatine can indeed be kidney, kidney issues. So you hear a lot of people say, if you take creatine, you're killing your kidneys, it's game over. This is not being shown either. This is a misconception. So fun fact, I actually got my blood work done as we really advocated people to do and something I need to do once again, because I think it's a great way to make sure everything's all good there. Um, and my doctor's like, whoa, your creatine levels are crazy high because I was supplementing with creatine. I was saturated with creatine. And he said, this can be indicative of kidney failure. If your creatine levels get super, super shot up, that could potentially mean your kidneys are failing. Obviously I'm healthy. I'm fine. My kidneys weren't failing. He had me cycle off it for a week to check and they went absolutely down to baseline. They were totally fine and there was no issues. Once again, having more of this in your system is not causing your kidneys to fail. A lot of scientific studies have been done on this. And if you want an incredible resource, I recommend examine.com. Check them out. Look at creatine. We have no affiliation with them, but they will take a ridiculous amount of scientific studies, break them down quite simply, and they're very easy to consume. I'm, I'm scrolling up here. I think they have a couple hundred studies actually about creatine where they've gathered their information and this has been a phenomenal thing so there's 147 references for you there and one other side effect that is commonly talked about is weight gain with creatine with this bloating effect if you're holding more water quite simply if I took my water bottle and chugged this whole thing and stepped on a scale I would hold that water now it's not going to be to that extent and everyone is entirely different for myself I do find when I have creatine versus when I'm off it it is about three to four pounds for me and before that freaks you out, I'm a bigger person. I'm 213 pounds, 214 pounds. I'd likely be about 210 to 11 if I was off of creatine. And you may say, I don't want this weight gain. This is horrible. Keep in mind, this weight gain means nothing. Unless someone walks up to me, puts me on a scale and goes, ha ha, you're four pounds heavier. Why should this matter? If this offers me more of a benefit, doesn't change how I look and improves how I perform, it allows me to actually lift heavier and create more challenge in my muscles with more endurance to actually get more results. Why would I not take that advantage? So some people really need to get over their own weights and like this isn't true weight. You could just get off of creatine and you would lose that weight and you'd see that effect. And sometimes when I'm traveling or things get messed up, I'll notice I'm off that because I'll see this huge whoosh. And then a few days after taking it, I'll see that weight come back up. So that is a common question I'll get. And just see that as your new weight, like just lean into it. And then if you're off of it too, it's good to use that measure because you could be off it for a few days after vacation. You could say, yay, I lost four pounds. But there's a chances are you kind of net it out even or you're the same weight and you're off creatine then you start taking your creatine after your vacation you see your weight come up so that is a consideration to have but i would really recommend if you're going to supplement with it supplement with it don't overthink it it's that simple and once again this is one of the most studied and safest supplements that actually will produce results so effectively there are like no side effects with creatine the one i would warn and a lot of people will say is 
I've been told I need to load creatine. And this is the one side effect I will say you will get is you can get some digestive issues if you're loading excessive amounts of it. If you're having 30 grams a day, there's chances you may have some diarrhea, some stomach pain, because that's an excessive amount. Now, if you needed to rapidly achieve, satur achieve saturation, you could do a loading phase. There are just very few, if any, circumstances I would recommend this. I needed to load because I was off of it for some weird reason. I think I was trying to make weight for my powerlifting, which I think was a mistake. I was younger and I loaded it to take it for that time and I felt fine. That was the one exception. But loading essentially came from the ability for them to make more money from the supplement because it's obviously not a great turnaround in terms of price to value for them. It's amazing for us, not for them. And they want to jack up those prices. So if you're taking 30 grams, you're going to burn through it faster. They're going to burn more, but there's no need to rapidly saturate your muscles. If this process takes a week, it'll naturally occur. If you weren't taking it before, you'll get that benefit. There is no need to uh, really push for it. So the only issue would be is if you're having excessive amounts, you would have some digestive issues. So there is no need to load it whatsoever. Just take three to five grams. You'll achieve saturation that is a common misconception and that's an easy way to avoid it another frequently asked question i'll see is what are the best forms and is it a natural source so the best forms once again creatine monohydrate creatine is naturally occurring in our systems as it is other meat products so you'll actually get some creatine from chicken alongside beef but keep in mind you might say i eat chicken every day so i'm good this may not necessarily cover all your bases, depends on your source of chicken, depends how consistently you're eating it. And that is where supplementing with it is a much better source. But for reference, beef will have about 4.5 grams per kilogram. So keeping a kilogram is like 2.21 pounds. So that's actually a pretty decent amount of beef. And for chicken, it will have about 3.4 grams per kilogram. Once again, that is a pretty significant amount of meat and chances are you're not eating that much. So that is something to absolutely consider. The next question I get is when is the best time to take it? As I've addressed earlier, and the best time is whenever you will do it consistently, whenever you will remember. I like a BCA, a pre, a water, whatever it may be for my workout. So it's really easy for me. A shaker is synonymous with me taking my creatine and that ensures I indeed do get the benefit. So that's when I choose to take it. If you wanna be that person having your coffee, that's totally fine. If you put in your morning water, power to you. Whatever works for you, whatever you do consistently, that is the best time. And the last question I often see is what will happen when you stop taking creatine? So what happens when you stop taking creatine is your serum levels start to drop and this will slowly have you desaturate your muscles from that creatine effect. And this will happen over time. It happens at a certain rate and you'll get to baseline levels after about four weeks, but you will notice this effect pretty fast. And that's where if you're having huge gaps, two to three days within your creatine consumption, you can lose the benefits. And that's where being more consistent than not is to your benefit. If you miss one day, it's not gonna affect me too much. I'll take it the next day. It's no big deal, but it's those times where you miss two to three days that you will lose the benefits. But once again, creatine is something to me that is very simple, that can be made very complex. And this is my attempt to really break it down, to break through the myths, to show you what it can do. And to me, any edge in the gym that is safe, healthy, and cheap is gonna be to your benefit. In my opinion, this is the number one naturally rated supplement. And you'll notice with this podcast, Integrity is at the forefront. We have nothing to sell you, nothing to do anything like that. For creatine, find the cheapest one you can, find the best value. Don't be suspect to marketing. I've done all Max because I find they're fairly priced. Yes, it is a brand name. I'm sure you can get cheaper from my protein or something like that. We used to be sponsored by my protein. We were sponsored by HP Labs. They both had a monohydrate that worked. But once again, just get the cheapest one you can, get the benefit of it. There doesn't need to be any confusion here. Anything you want to add, Kyle? Yeah, I just think there's so many misconceptions with this. I know Josh covered it, but even I was just telling him there's marketing now to this, uh, in, it's called Instatized Creatine. It's just this absolute scam where they they talk about how it dilutes into water and you don't see it then. And then it just, it's, you know, when it goes into your body, it uh, it's instantly gets broken down, like just all these different things. And I feel like when you are out in the supplement industry, especially their goal is to try to make it sound as complex and like, and then like sexy essentially so it like all these words and buzzwords that they toss in there just it doesn't have to be like that even even just similar to the, the the myth of like loading for example like I had so many people when I first you know convinced them not even convinced but um had them go on to creatine especially once again with our clients school isn't to try to add on a bunch of different things like I was even saying the other day about how many times I've saved my clients from spending on a lot of nonsense and 
I just get a lot of questions like, should I buy this? Should I buy this? Should I, whatever. But anyways, so the main thing within that is that um, overall, even for the loading side of things, like it's just, it's not needed. And you have to always look at and be weary of this type of stuff because even my sister, when she got it, she was crushing it and she was like, Hey, I saw it said to, to load. And I'm just like, no, trust me. Like you do not need to, like it says it on the bottle. I know usually you're supposed to listen to bottles, but trust me, this is not the case. Like just take three to five grams a day. You're good. And so, yeah, my basic message there was just, you know, be wary of this stuff, especially as you do explore different supplements. And our biggest mission here is to give you exactly what you need to know and that's why i'm so glad we covered creatine because it is absolutely on our top three supplements once again when you listen to us we are not talking about all these different things like our goal is to just tell you the most important stuff and actually save you money and that's even what we do for all our clients because like i said i've had clients who are they go into healthy planet they send me a list of things and photos and hey what should i get and i'm like no you're already investing in the coaching you've got the gym membership like I will take care of you and I'm going to tell you exactly what you need to know. And yeah, creatine is the one thing I usually do end up getting quite a few people having, especially when they are consistent with the workouts, their nutrition, their sleep quality is as best as it can be. And that was great. I'm glad Josh broke that down. As you can tell, he's the creatine expert. So uh, yeah, very great points there. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure to subscribe to our newsletter, top link. If you have a friend who's confused about creatine, please send this to them, share this to your story. That would really mean a lot. We really made sure to get all the best information together.